Vénganse, vámonos. My surname is Ansa. It's not De Ansa, as some people who are not familiar with the Basque names sometimes call me. I was born in 1736 near the Fronteras Presidio, or the fort in Sonora. My father was born in Spain, and he was of Basque descent. I am labeled a criollo, a Spaniard who's born outside of Spain. I am a Presidio soldier, as my father was before me, and I have been serving to protect our northern missions, trade routes, and communities since I was 15. I am married to Ana Maria Perez Serrano, but sadly, we have no children. When I began to contemplate this expedition to the northwestern frontier, most of the route was unknown to me. I needed a travel corridor that guaranteed water for many people and livestock through the deserts along the way. I knew parts of this harsh land and its challenges and found an appropriate route on an exploratory trip in 1774. The king, Carlos III, through his viceroy in Mexico City, gave me final authorization for a colonizing expedition. As we prepare to depart on this mission, I am 39 years old. There are no written records of what Anza looked like or his physical appearance, but we believe he must have been an inspiring figure in both intellect and stature. Ansa recruited married soldiers with families with the idea that they would immediately form a colony at the new outpost called San Francisco. The 200 colonists consisted of 30 families, 42 men, 39 women, and 119 children. Most were poor, and many recruited from Culiacán in northern New Spain. Altogether, 300 people traveled across unfamiliar and inhospitable territory for a new and better life. The final gathering of people, livestock, and provisions took place at Tubac. We departed on October 23, 1775. I gave the order to load up with the command, Bayan subiendo, or begin mounting. It took more than two hours to get started. With so many people, there is much delay and it is no small labor to break camp. This will be our daily routine. The scouts head out first to determine the route. I lead the group, and Father Font follows, singing the morning alabado, or the hymn of praise. Behind come the colonists with soldier escorts, followed by the mule train. A herd of horses and cattle are in the rear. We make our way along a wide corridor of land, over routes and trails that Indians have long used for travel and trade. I understand the importance of building good relations with the many natives that we're encountering along our journey. For this reason, I have issued a proclamation making known the penalties imposed on anyone who should attempt to steal their goods or violate their women. I forbid anyone to raise arms against them except in a case of necessity for the defense of life. On one occasion, four cattle were stolen, and I sent out soldiers to recover them with specific instructions not to harm the natives or to seek retribution, but only to deliver a warning. To the credit of all, my orders have been followed. When we left the Colorado River crossing, we faced the most challenging part of our journey. The vast desert we entered offered little water. We did carry a few days' supply for ourselves but our livestock needed water in abundance. I devised a plan to get our people and livestock safely across the desert. We divided into four groups. Three groups of colonists traveled one day apart southwest across the Bas Sand Dunes. I sent men ahead to dig holes in the dry washes so the wells would fill with water before the rest of the group arrived. 
vaqueros driving the livestock made up the fourth group, and they traveled a more direct route, sometimes moving two days without water for the livestock. Then, like a miracle, the parched desert gave way to fertile soils, abundant water, and lush vegetation. Streams and rivers flowed everywhere. Daily, fresh fish replaced dried beef jerky. Never had these people seen such abundance. They entered a land bountiful beyond all expectations as they approached the place now called Los Angeles and arrived at Mission San Gabriel on January 4, 1776. This is the first civilized place we have seen in three months. Most of my soldiers and I went to San Diego to put down a native uprising. It is clear that Mission San Gabriel is not prepared for the extra miles to feed. After traveling for so long, hidden tensions are beginning to show. Four men deserted the day before my arrival back from San Diego. They took 25 horses and two mules. Moraga and 10 soldiers tracked them down and caught up with the expedition at Mission San Antonio on March the 7th. 18 days after leaving San Gabriel, the expedition arrived in Monterrey, the most northern Spanish settlement in Alta California less than 100 miles south of San Francisco Bay. They made it, almost. The colonists remained in Monterrey while Ansa set out to explore the Bay Area. On March 28, 1776, Ansa and his small party stood on a bluff overlooking the majestic bay. It was this site that Ansa selected for the new colony. <laughs> 